Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to St Jude's Church Online. We very much hope that you have a blessed morning with us this morning. We meet together in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a joy to be with you this morning and it's a great delight to have Ruth McCabe, who's going to be opening up God's word for us as we conclude this mini-series as we've been looking at the Book of Romans together. Our hope and prayer is that your hearts and minds have found some much needed assurance and comfort in these difficult days that we're in. Uh, this last term in B Group, we've been looking at the book of Joshua together. We've been thinking about God coming good on a particular promise to his people, the promise of entering the land. And God did indeed come good on his promise to his people, and they tasted rest on every side of the land. God fought for them. You could say God was their guardian, and God did exactly what he promised for his people. Now, in Joshua chapter 21, verse 45, we read this. Not one of all the Lord's good promises to the house of Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. And if that was true for them then, how much more is it true for us today as the bride of Christ, the church today? Well, let's pray as we begin our time together. Almighty God, we thank you that you are indeed a promise making and promise keeping God who fights to bring us home with you. We give you thanks that every promise finds its yes and amen in Jesus. We thank you that in Jesus we have rest and true rest. Strengthen us to live today in great hope for tomorrow. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, whatever you're going through today, let's encourage one another as we sing our first song, My Guardian.
so lovely to hear the Bacon family this morning. Thank you so much for preparing that uh, for us. It's so easy to wander, isn't it, from the King of Love and Grace. There's so much that can distract our minds and lead us away from God's care. I don't know how your week has been this week with the Lord, but if you're anything like me, well, my heart is prone to wander off in all kinds of directions. It runs after all different things. And so it's right that as we come together, we confess our failure and apathy to live wholeheartedly for Christ. Let's use the words of the confession that are going to come up on screen to ask for the Lord's mercy and forgiveness together. We say this together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be. That we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Lord God, we thank you that you don't reward us according to our wickedness. But you treat us so kindly because of Jesus. Thank you that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Please, by your Holy Spirit, assure our hearts that absolutely nothing in all of creation can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Please, we pray and ask for your strength to encourage us in the battle for holiness this week. We ask this in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Well, it's great to have Sam Douglas uh, with us this morning. Uh, Sam's just going to give us a, a little bit of an update behind the vision with the intern. Uh, and there's some news about an intern, I think, from this week. Sam. Hi, Adam. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been an amazing week this week. We've had um, some intern interviews, which has been really, really exciting. Um, but I, I thought I'd just start by giving a brief kind of sort of outline as to what the intern thing has been like for the last since Jews for like the last 10 years I think um I think we were interviewed we've interviewed this week for what will be hopefully our 10 10th intern as St Jude's um and historically it's sort of been a mix between children's youth and worship and it's been such an amazing thing both for the church St Jude's church and the wider church and for um the individual doing the internship too because it's for us as a church, it's like our opportunity to give someone an experience to grow in their gifts and callings. And for the intern coming, it's their opportunity to grow in their gifts and callings by serving the church. And so we can grow someone um, in their own gifts and callings to help serve St Jude's, but also as they go out after the internship to help serve the wider church too. So that's really, really cool. Um, but this this time, instead of just being a, a youth children's or worship intern, it's going to be a youth slash children's slash communications intern um, and part of the reason for this is because our um, our communications at St Jude's over the past over lockdown has just grown massively and it's been absolutely amazing we went from just doing Facebook and Twitter to now doing Facebook Twitter Instagram and YouTube and we're publishing like about 10 videos a week on YouTube and posting those on social media thought for the day we started in April and now on Tuesday we're going to get to our 100th video and so we've been able to do so many things which are really really amazing and we're really really keen to keep them going and to continue them um, but we've noticed because a lot of the reason we've been able to do this is because lockdown has created time that we wouldn't otherwise have had because before there have been loads of other responsibilities and when lockdown started some of those responsibilities didn't continue because we couldn't go and see people in person and so that's created some more time. Um, but we've noticed that if we're going to go back after lockdown, we can't do all of these amazing things we've been doing inside of lockdown, plus what we did before at the same time. And so part of what the intern is going to do is communications as well to help us continue our online presence. Um, and that's something we found through talking to people and through our feedback survey. It's very difficult to find someone who doesn't want us to continue all the amazing things we've been doing throughout lockdown. So that's kind of the vision behind it. Um, and then, so we had some applications to through and we interviewed two really, really, really strong candidates. They were both exceptional, but we, we were only allowed to choose one intern. And so 
we had to think about it really carefully because it's a decision that can really affect someone's whole life even. Um, and we came to a unanimous decision and we were able to um, appoint someone and we were able to ask them and they said yes. And so now we've just got to wait for the checks to come through. We're slightly hesitant to say details at this point, but once the checks have come through, we really look forward to introducing them properly to the church. And they're just an amazing person with a really strong faith, some really great giftings, some fantastic experience, both in, in youth and in communication. So it looks like it's going to be just an amazing year for us as a church and for them as an intern coming to the St. Jude's family. Great, thanks Sam. Well, we very much look forward to welcoming the new intern to St. Jude's. And it's a great reminder to us, isn't it? That God is good all the time, all the time, God is good. Well, let's sing again of God's goodness to us. Wake up. 
Psalm 117 says, Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his love towards us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Oh, what a wonderful psalm and what a wonderful song. Let's pray as we come to God's word. Lord, as we come now uh, to hear the reading and preaching of your words, we pray that you would help us to hear your voice, open our eyes to see your glory, give us ears to hear your truth and believe it, remind us of your faithfulness and shape our wills that we might be those who are conformed more and more and more into the image of your son, our saviour. We ask this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Over to Gary for our reading. Good morning, everyone. Today's reading is taken from Romans 8, starting at, chap starting at verse 26 and going on to the end. Romans 8, starting at verse 26. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our, our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against him? Those whom God has chosen, it is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Jesus Christ, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness? or danger, or sword, as it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, everyone. I wonder how many of you can continue this sentence. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore? Or perhaps you're not a Shakespeare lover, uh, but you might remember this. I wandered lonely as a... Cloud. Well, maybe some of you are too young to have learned that one at school, but you might know this. "'Twas the night before Christmas when... Well, more of all of this later. 
Here at St. Jude's over these past few weeks, we have been studying some of the Book of Romans. And today is the last session um, at this current series. And I thought it would be just a good idea to have a short review of what Paul has said so far. In chapters one, two and three, which we didn't actually look at, it focuses on mankind's sinfulness and the need to get right with God. We are all condemned. Yes, even the Jews who lived under God's law and all the other nations of the world known as the Gentiles, we are all condemned. Romans 3, chap uh, chapter 3, verse 23 declares that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And then in chapters four and five, Paul focuses on salvation, which is God's provision for getting us into a right relationship with him. There is nothing we can do to earn it. God's gift of being right with him is through faith in Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And if we accept this free gift from God, we have peace and hope. Do you remember that Rachel, who started the whole series off, shared some of the hope that she has in God, even though she's gone through some difficult situations in her own personal life? Knowing Jesus can make such a difference in any situation that we have to deal with in life. And then the next few chapters, chapter six and seven, focuses on the struggle within us to become more like the person God wants us to be. Adam and Joss both spoke on chapter six and about the seriousness of sin in our lives. Romans chapter 6 verse 30, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Do you remember how Paul explains that he has the desire to do good, but he can't often carry that out, and instead he finds himself doing what he hates, what he doesn't want to do, in chapter seven, how true that can be for me sometimes. Perhaps you find that as well. The reality is that sin is still within us. It's a struggle between good and evil. Neil shared with us about uh, the situation we're in in our world at the minute about COVID-19 and how we need protection from it. We need a vaccine. And I thought it was great because it was such a, a, an image that we could use that Jesus is our protector um, in this world of sin against the evil and the power of sin in our lives. Paul said in chapter seven, verse 24, what a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And you know, the news got even better in Romans chapter eight. A couple of weeks, Debs reminded us that as Christians, there is now no condemnation for us. We've been set free from the consequences of sin. And God gives us the Holy Spirit so that our minds are set on godly things on the things above. Last week, Adam talked to us about the bindweed that he has in the garden and the struggle he has to get rid of it. And the struggle that we have to get rid of sin is still within us. It's a battle, but the Holy Spirit is there to help us, to bring us into that new relationship with God that relationship with God, that means that we are adopted as his children. We can call the creator God, Daddy. So we've been on a journey with Paul, 
just think of it as going up a mountain. We start at the bottom with the big picture of the world and how people turn their backs on God's way of living. Sin that condemns us to death. Or if you want to use um, some Christian terminology, we're talking about condemnation. And then we climb up a little bit and we stop to look out over the wonderful vista that Paul shows us about God's way of providing and um, how to be in a right relationship with him through Jesus. Justification. And then we climb up further up the mountain and Paul stops along the way and explains there is still that struggle and we have to get right with Jesus, become more holy, sanctification. But we've been, Holy Spirit brings us into that glorious freedom of being children of God. And today we get to the climax of the whole mountain experience and what a wonderful view we can see. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, if you want to look at it in your Bibles, it says that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Isn't that just fantastic news? No matter what your situation, no matter how you feel, God loves you and God is working for you. He is able to bring about good in your life. Think of the story of Joseph in the Old Testament who was sold into slavery by his brothers and yet he ended up um, doing something that he never expected to do. He ended up being the second of command of Egypt and how he God used him to bring his own family um, safe from the famine. God can do things like that for us as well. He can bring good out of any situation, no matter how low or how awful we feel. And as we get to this mountain top, we can look around and see yet another great truth of the Christian faith. In verse 31, Paul says, If God is for us, who can be against us? Paul is reminding us that God really loves us. I wonder, do you feel insecure in your faith? You may feel guilty. You may feel discouraged or tired or hopeless. But Paul emphasizes that no one, no thing can be as powerful as God. And look again, we're on this mountain top. There's another wonderful truth that Paul shows us in verse 32. It says that Jesus graciously gives us all things. We have been given salvation through Jesus. We have been given eternal life through Jesus. We have been given the Holy, the Holy Spirit. We've been given God's word through the scriptures. I don't know if you have ever experienced the joy of giving somebody a present and then watching them unwrap it and see the joy and surprise on their face. God is like that too. He's waiting to watch us unwrap his incomparable riches of his grace, as Paul puts it in the letter to the Ephesians. And we have all of that ahead of us in the ages yet to come. And looking again at this chapter we've been reading at the end of chapter eight, Romans chapter eight, yet another wonderful truth. Verse 35, who shall separate us? from the love of Christ. Trouble, hardship, persecution, famine, 
nakedness, danger, or the sword. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. When we go back to Northern Ireland, sometimes we go up, a, 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 well, we call it a mountain, it's probably a, a high hill. And it overlooks a beautiful Strangford Lock. It's called the Clockmore Mountain with the Clockmore Stone at the top. And it just reminded me as we were looking at all these wonderful things that Paul shows us, that we were up this mountain looking out at the wonderful view at the other mountains and the sea and the lock. And then there's this big stone and we can actually climb then on top of the big stone and we see yet even more. And that's what we get to at the end of this chapter. We finally got to the mountain, but we can climb up just that another few feet at the top of the stone to see this most wonderful picture, this big picture that Paul has been sharing with us. I love going to the cinema. I love going to see um, movies that are funny, maybe sometimes sad, movies that can be scary, movies can be thrillers. Maybe they can be um, so complicated that I don't really understand what's happening. But the one thing I need to really enjoy it is to know that at the end, good triumphs over evil. And as Christians, we know that is the end, good triumphs over evil. Our lives can be complicated, they can be simple, they can be sad or happy. But Romans 8, chapter 38 and 39, just remind us of that wonderful, wonderful thing that Paul has been talking to us about. It says, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Isn't that just fantastic? What a wonderful God we have. What a wonderful truth to hold on to. Remember, I started with those quotations at the start of the talk quotations from literature that we may have learned years and years ago. It's amazing how many words go into our brain and we can retain them and then bring them out later on in life. But these words, Romans chapter 8 verses 38 and 39, I want them in me, I want them in my brain, I want them to go down into my heart. I want to be able to say them so that Jesus did on the cross was he quoted, quoted scripture. I want to know the truth of these words when I'm on my deathbed that nothing can separate me from the love of Christ Jesus, our Lord. And I hope you know that too. Amen. Amen. Ruth, thanks so much uh, for that. It's a great reminder, isn't it, that God loves us and that God can bring about good things even out of bad and difficult situations, that God is for us. Well, thanks so much for that. Great reminder. Let's sing again before the throne of God above.
But we're going to have a time of prayer now, and Richard is going to be leading us this morning in our prayers. Do. Neil, are you there? We got, we got Richard there. That's great. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this morning, um, when I say, uh, "Lord, in my Lord, in your mercy," will you respond? Hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you that you are working your purposes out. Thank you that, whether recognised or not, human history has its ultimate focus in the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for our nation at the moment, asking for relief and healing from the effects of the pandemic, but also that people will seize the opportunity to think about what in life matters and has lasting value and will be open to the message of life and hope in the gospel. We pray that we may each be alive to what you're asking of us as ambassadors for your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you and praise you for the work of InterServe, and we pray especially today uh, for Tim and Rachel Green in Malaysia with thanksgiving for them. We praise you for the progress against the coronavirus in that country and the easing of restrictions. We praise you that Tim was able to visit the UK in June and July in order to see his mother recovering from serious Ill illness and surgery. And we thank you for the mercy of that provision, despite extremely limited travel availability. We ask for perseverance and encouragement for Tim and Rachel as they continue to share Christ with their student group. And also for the growth in depth of all those who have responded to you in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all Christian leaders at this time of gospel opportunity and pastoral challenge, especially for Christopher, our Bishop, Justin, our Archbishop, and our St. Jude's clergy. Please give them energy, encouragement, wisdom, and refreshment. We pray also for all those training for specific ministry including Fran Carabot at St. Margaret's, asking that you will give them great joy in learning and serving. And Father, we lift to you all those coming to us this week for interview for appointment as vicar here. As they submit themselves to your direction, grant them responsiveness to you and peace. And we pray for wisdom and discernment for all those with decision-making responsibility, including our wardens, Philippa and Joss, that we may be led here by the man or woman of your choosing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, we lift to you for healing and wholeness, all those known to us who are unwell or in any kind of need, and the family and friends of all who have died recently, including Jean Proctor, Laura Preston's mother, and Tony Turner, our former vicar here. To each bring comfort and peace, but above all, the knowledge of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we conclude, let's finish with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen, Richard. Thank you very much for leading in our prayers this morning. Uh, just a couple of notices uh, before a final prayer and blessing, and then we'll break out into our groups. Uh, I think Debs and uh, Kathy are going to give us our first notice this morning. Brilliant. Yeah. OK, it's good to see everybody. And thanks. special thanks to everybody who's been praying over the last 24 hours for these interviews that Richard mentioned in the prayers. Um, so there were at least 32 people signed up, but I'm sure more people were praying as well. And let's keep praying over these next few days as well. So that's really good. The notice I want to give you is about New Wine, because um, those of you who normally would go to New Wine, we should be there right now and uh, sitting there in the sun. Well, actually, we'd be at a morning celebration and then we'd be celebrating in the sunshine, obviously, because it's always sunny at New Wine, uh, just as it's always sunny in South Sea. So anyway, but because we can't be there, we're going to the United, sorry, New Wine are doing um, an online thing, as you know. And so it starts on Thursday evening and goes through till Monday morning. All of the um, celebrations and seminars are going to be live. So you can click in live through the website or we've got a link on the news sheet and you choose where you want to go. So we can go live, but you can also catch up afterwards. But I think I would encourage you to go to watch it live if you can so that you can feel a part of it all. Um, we've got a WhatsApp group so that those who are interested can be kept up to date with the latest news and we can communicate about who's going to what and what we're watching and what we've seen. So, so there's stuff during the day, but also I want to just let you know about after hours. So every evening at 9.15, we're going to do some form of after hours. And that's either going to be meeting in the church garden for a, for a socially distanced catch up or we're going to be via Zoom if it's absolutely chucking it down. So this Thursday, 9.15, if you'd like to come along to the church garden at St Jude's, plastic chairs are provided, bring your own drink, whatever that's going to be, and we can talk about the evening celebration that people have been to and talk about what we're gonna to go to. So I've had a look at the programme and I've decided some of the things that I'm definitely going to go to. So Friday morning, I'm going to go to the celebration that's been broadcast from Impact, and it's Bishop Jill Duff, and she's talking about the book of Nehemiah, with a, and she's talking about rebuilding the walls. So I'm quite excited about listening to her for that. And in the evening, I'm going to go to a celebration where Ben Lindsay, who I've not heard of, but he's talking about um, how the church can get involved in the fight for racial justice. And there's lots of seminars in the afternoon as well. So I'm, I'm planning on going to one on... Um, Friday afternoon which is about creation where there's some key people from Tear Fund who are going to be talking about that and then on Saturday Kate Middleton not the Kate Middleton but Kate Middleton who I've heard before and she's really really good she's talking about managing anxiety in times of global pandemic so I thought that might be quite good so it should be really good so please do come if you can okay and over to Kathy. Thanks. Very, oh, brilliant. There we are. Thanks very much, Debs. Yes. Yeah, so um, just wanted to share with you again a bit more to say that I've been going to New Wine with my family for the last four years and we were really sad that it was cancelled. But now we're really excited because we can share it with more people. So if you've never been before, if you've never even heard of New Wine, it's all free and uh, you can get involved. And there's two things that I think are really important to us about New Wine. And one is that we can set aside time as a family to really listen to God. Because when we set aside time to listen to God, we're more likely to hear him. So we as a family are still setting aside this time um, where New Wine is online. Um, you might not be able to set aside all the time, but I'd really encourage you to think about, can you set aside some time to worship and listen to God? And the other thing that's really important about New Wine for us is community and spending time with our church family. So we don't want to lose that aspect. So I'd really encourage you to contact Debs and get on that WhatsApp group. But I've also got a WhatsApp group for parents who are encouraging their children and teenagers to get involved. So um, if you would like to be on that WhatsApp group, 
um, discussing recommendations and chat about children and youth parts of New Wine, please contact me. If you um, aren't on Church Suite, you can always just email the church office and they can forward on uh, an email to us if you don't have our number or our email. So please do get in touch. Also, just one on one, we've already arranged for um, one of my kids' friends to come round and just watch it together because we are we have that freedom to be two households together. So maybe in little groups of two, we can watch things together and then we can pray for each other. Um, so that'd be brilliant. I'm really looking forward to worship. It won't be the same, and I'm really sad. I was thinking back to last year, singing with thousands of people, but it will be great to worship God together across the country. Um, and also really looking forward to some of the parenting seminars that are going on, um, talking about how we can bring our children through this really difficult time and encourage and grow their faith in this difficult time. So um, why don't you in your coffee group find out if anyone in the group's ever been to New Wine and whether they're planning to get involved. And uh, don't forget to contact us to join the WhatsApp groups. Thanks. Kathy, Debbie, thanks so much uh, for that. Uh, it just sounds really exciting, doesn't it? Um, all the great stuff that's going to come up this next week. Let's all get involved. Let's encourage each other as we do this. And I'm sure it will bring up lots of great topics of conversation for us to be having in the evenings as we meet together um, at church starting on Thursday night, which sounds really good fun. Uh, as many of you know, there are um, interviews happening this week for the role of the new vicar here at St Jude's. Uh, that's happening on Wednesday. The interviews are going to be on Thursday. So please continue to pray this week that God would be bringing the right person and that the Lord would be at work all the way through uh, this process, that um, there would be unity in the decision and discernment um, as to who might be the right candidate. Uh, if any, that are uh, applying this time round. Well, let's have one final prayer and then we'll break out into our groups. May the Father from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name, strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith and that knowing his love, broad and long and deep and high beyond all knowledge, you may be filled with all the fullness of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and those you love, near and far, now and forever. Amen. So abide in peace, to love and serve the Lord, in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.